these teams in the lower half of the Dallas region. The winner of this game will face the victor between Rutgers and Texas A&M. All four of these games are being played right now. Baylor, the top seed in the Dallas region. I'm Kara Capuano along with former Wake Forest standout LaChina Robinson. LaChina postseason success stems from leaning on the hot hand. Which stars are we watching? Kara, Jasmine James is the show for the Lady Bulldogs. She has the court vision to get her teammates involved, but she can also take over a game with her explosive scoring, 14 points in the second half on Sunday. And for the Knowles, Sierra Brevard cannot be stopped when she catches the ball with two feet in the paint. Through the double team, one-on-one -on -one coverage, it doesn't matter. She's packing the power in the interior. In our Capital One starting lineups for Georgia, a couple of upperclassmen leading the way. Number 21, Portia Phillips, the lone senior, averages a double-double. Number 11, Meredith Mitchell, the junior, set the tone for the Lady Bulldogs in their first round game early. For Florida State, Coach Sue Simrau says her backcourt is going to be the backbone of a deep postseason run. The seniors, Christian Honeycutt, number five, and Courtney Ward, the point guard, number 12, have earned 98 wins in their illustrious Seminole careers to tie the team record. We are looking forward to finally completing the field of the Sweet 16, the second session of the second day of second round play. Florida State, La China, a team that's looking to establish itself as a consistent presence in the postseason, and they're doing it. Well, they've got more offensive balance than many of the teams across the country, but you better look out, Kara, because Georgia is playing record-setting defense since the regular season ended. We're getting ready to tip off Georgia in red, Florida State in their home whites as the three seed, Georgia the six seed. Natasha Howard, the freshman, against Portia Phillips, the senior. Florida State, first offensive possession. You see Georgia's going to start off in there man-to-man. -man. They want to get up and really guard Florida State. Get into the gap, pressure them. Paladin Miller finds Mitchell in the corner. Phillips shoots on Brevard. Offensive rebound to Hassel, ripped away by Honeycutt. Florida State in a zone on that defensive possession. Georgia not a very good three-point shooting team. Kara, keep that in mind. Andy Landers in his 32nd year at Georgia has been to 28 of 30 NCAA tournaments, including 17 straight, leading the Lady Bulldogs to 18 Sweet 16s. Rivard calling for it on the block. Shoots over Hassel. The rebound still up for grabs. Mitchell comes up with it. Single coverage on Sierra Bavard. We'll see how long that lasts, depending on if she can start to knock down some shots in the paint. Jasmine James finds Phillips. She'll head to the line. The leading free throw shooter in the Southeastern Conference this season. I really like that look by James because she was aggressive. Keep in mind, this is her first year playing point guard. She played back a point last year when Ashley House was there. Portia Phillips hits the first free throw, not the second, but Georgia comes up with a big rebound. Mitchell from the corner. Phillips with another offensive board. Florida State ball. Sue Semrau in her 14th year with Florida State. Seven straight NCAA tournament appearances for the Seminoles. Reached the Elite Eight for the first time last year. We're trying a new personnel, but the goal is to get further. Absolutely. I mean, every year Coach Semrau has said that we want to be able to win that next game in the next game. They're playing a powerhouse in postseason in Georgia. They've been there for a long time. Different level of athleticism for opponent for both of these teams in their second round as compared to their first round matchups. Against the 2 3 zone, you see the travel there by James, but Portia Phillips working the short corner. They're going to try to find the opening there against the zone. It's a good sweet spot to find in offense.
Georgia has owned the series against Florida State, 7-0 all time. Mono a mano, Sue Senrao has lost in three meetings against Andy Landers. She said he's crafty, his teams are always successful, he's very hard to coach against. Georgia defense comes up big. Hassel kicks it back out to James. That pass inside against the zone was too easy. Florida State's got to tighten it up. Holly to Miller for three. Boy, did she need that scoreless in the first round game. Talking about a freshman that can really score the basketball, Coach Landers said he needs her to do more of that to keep their versatility. The jumper won't fall for Honeycutt. Howard with the athletic putback attempt, but also short. Deluzio thought about the shot. And a foul is called Portia Phillips right now on the deck. Their hands down. Maybe she got popped in the face. She's slow to get up there. And I'll tell you, she has one of the toughest players you will see. We'll see here on film. Looking at the replay, yeah, it was her own teammate, Meredith Mitchell. Those long arms, she got her, but it looks like Portia is okay. She's still down a little there. She's a tough one. I'll tell you this, if she is down or she's injured whatsoever, something has really gone on because she has got so much heart in place, so hard. It takes a lot for her to have a seat. I assume we'll see Portia Phillips right back in this game as soon as it's warranted. But meantime, Anne-Marie Armstrong checks in for Georgia. James looking to try to get a pass inside. Mitchell's pass too much. Deluzio has Ward from three. Georgia ball. And what we are seeing so far defensively by Georgia is they are packing it inside, not allowing Brevard to touch the basketball. Florida State a little hesitant to put out the outside shot. They've got to put it up from outside to open things up in the paint. Miller for three. Deluzio looked to get a piece of that. Florida State. Faster, more athletic, transition-based team. Great offensive rebound by Honeycutt. All effort number five. And that's a good look by Deluzio as well. She is one of those that, though she has not been shooting the three well as of late, she'll have to stay aggressive to keep things open. Mitchell tries to take it in, finds Armstrong open for her first basket. Two Georgia advantage in what's been a very fast-paced physical game. Georgia ball when we come back, Lady Bulldogs by four. The nationwide series at California, Saturday at 5.
the NCAA Women's Championship is presented by the Capital One Cup. Learn more and check the standings at CapitalOneCup.com and in part by Select 55. The superior taste makes it select. The 55 calories makes it the lightest beer in the world. We welcome you back to Auburn Arena. Portia Phillips still on the bench. And if you look at the side of her forehead there, you can see quite a knot. LaChina, I'm having memories of that Scotty Pippen playoff knot. It's like a Bugs Bunny welt up there right now. Look yeah, at that. She, she definitely got banged up, and she's not in the game right now. They're going to get her some ice. So that's not a good sign for Georgia. One senior on the team, and that's Phillips on the bench right now. And Marie Armstrong filling in for Phillips, calling for it. Drops the three. After a day when her practice session yesterday, she was ice cold and frustrated. But when she's dialed in, she is dialed in. And you saw her versatility. She's got size, but she can also step out and shoot. Back out toward at the top. Honeycutt drops it into Gavard. Leads it a little far. Gets her own rebound. And she'll head to the line. And we're going to take a look again at that injury to Portia Phillips. You see there in your screen, she just gets dinged in the head. She's going to get some ice to try to get the swelling down there, but I'm sure they're also checking to make sure that she didn't get shaken up. And she can see straight and everything is going all right inside there, Kara. Well, as you know, LaChina, mandated. They do not mess around with any injuries to the head. And Brevard hits both free throws after the first personal was whistled on Anne-Marie Armstrong. So Armstrong filling in for Phillips while she tries to ice down that forehead welt. Already with a foul, trying to defend Brevard. Florida State switching things up. They're going to go to man-to-man -man now. Try to get some energy on the defensive end. Ford gets up quickly. Thankfully, Chastity Clayton was there to help her get up. Teammates have each other's backs. Honeycutt feeds Brevard. Back out to Delucio. A three-pointer for Alexa Delucio. And there you see the balance of the Florida State offense. They can get it inside the Brevard, but when she's got trouble and can't make a move, they've got three-point shooters waiting to put it up. Miller had a screen, thought again. Mika Willis has checked in. This is the shot. And Willis may have to play big minutes here, depending on how long Phillips is out of the game. And Lucio feeds Brevard. One-on-one. -on -one. Another offensive rebound for Honeycutt. Ward wants it back to rethink this offensive set. Great decision just off the mark. Ford is keeping the pressure on, and right now Florida State is missing shots they would normally make. For China, what's it like for a player to adapt to a highly different intensity and physicality from a first round game to a second round game? Well, it's interesting. Both of these teams play in physical conferences, Kara, so this is the more of the speed they're used to playing in the ACC and the SEC. Coach Simrau said that Georgia is much more what the Seminoles are familiar than Sanford. Brevard will again head to the line to shoot two. The NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Championship continues Saturday on ESPN with regional action from Dayton, Ohio State, Tennessee, noon Eastern, then Oklahoma, Notre Dame, 2 o'clock Eastern. NCAA Division I Women's Championship, all 63 games on the ESPN networks. Substitutions now as Portia Phillips checks back in for Georgia along with Jasmine Hassel. Starting five on the floor for the Lady Bulldogs. And Sierra Brevard finds herself back at the free throw line. The most impressive thing about Brevard is not only does she play efficiently in the paint on offense, she can knock down free throws, which is huge for a post player that gets as many touches as she does. Brevard, an 80% free throw shooter. A number Shaq O'Neal wishes he had. Could feel more energy from the Florida State defense in the man-to-man -man than you did the zone. 
Shot clock at nine for James, being hampered in the corner by the ACC Defensive Player of the Year. Miller, shot clock's at two, you gotta do something. Nope, that wasn't it. Shot clock violation for the Lady Bulldogs. Kara, you hit the nail on the head. Christian Honeycutt. Her name you do not hear very often. The senior leader for Florida State, ACC Defensive Player of the Year, challenged Jasmine James there two or three times off Just the dribble. her, absolutely. She was not giving her space to breathe. Her ball pressure is unbelievable. One point ball game now. Florida State can take the lead on this possession. First action we've seen from Chelsea Davis. What a move. Boy, has she had an efficient, effective tournament. 13 points in 13 minutes in the first round game and immediately puts in her first basket. Hassel working on Davis. Goes to the left. Soft touch from the sophomore. And that's going to be a matchup to watch. Hassel playing her best basketball right now. She had 20 points in 29 minutes against Tennessee in the SEC tournament. Chelsea Davis goes right back at it. But Phillips with the rebound. Her fifth in the game. The rebound falls in the hands of Clayton. Clayton for three. Rebound on one end, three-pointer on the other. Florida State has taken the lead on the three-point shot by Chastity Clayton. The offense keeps coming for Florida State. Chastity Clayton with her versatility. This is what she does for you. She's in the game right now in a post position, but she can spot up in transition. And she's got the kind of length at the guard spot, too, that she can match up with Georgia on the perimeter. Chastity Clayton, the redshirt sophomore out of Alexandria, Virginia. Florida State's offense really ramped up despite significant personnel changes. And Coach Landers mentioned how synchronized their offense is. That's what you don't see there. There's balance and their synchronization. They work well inside out. They'll work the ball around, and they've got a lot of players that can shoot it from different positions on the floor. That's amazing when you consider in the Elite Eight run, they had three seniors who, along with Ward, swallowed up the majority of the playing time. You've got a whole new group out there, and they're in sync. But Courtney Ward is the only player that started in the NCAA tournament last year, but Coach Samrao changed her offense to more of a transition style, so that's one of the reasons why you see those numbers there. Miller drives into the soft spot in the zone, but an offensive foul is called. Florida State on an 11-2 run, and that has given the Seminoles the three seed, the 13-11 lead over six seed Georgia in a high energy game.
over Georgia at Auburn Arena. Karen Capuano and former Wake Forest standout LaChina Robinson with you. And we talk about the Power Six conferences. That is certainly holding up this year, LaChina, as we head into the Sweet 16 and see a lot of conferences dominating those smaller schools. Well, there is so much on the line in this game, and it's not just about who wins it. It's about the conference battles you see there, ACC and SEC. They share a lot of geography here in the southeast in terms of recruiting and different things like that. So there's some bragging rights on the line. A lot of these players play together. We've got Meredith Mitchell and Courtney Ward that share a team. And you see there, the SEC, the lowest number of bids in a while since the 90s, actually. So they don't really have a strong showing, and Georgia trying to hang in there for the Southeastern Conference. Clayton again, baseline this time. Rebound Howard. And the freshman with her first basket of the game. Coach Samurai said Howard looked like a freshman in her first NCAA game the other night. Much more relaxed here. If she can get on the boards, that'll loosen things up for her a little bit. Jasmine Hassel. Maybe surprised she was so open. Ward has Delucio on the wing and Howard on the other one. Her length, that rangy shot, and she just buries it time after time. Natasha Howard, you wouldn't think she shot over 36% for the three-pointer to look at her. Well, she's 0 for 7 in the last three games, so that's a huge shot for Howard because when she can stretch the defense, again, opening things up in the lane. Big offensive rebound for Meredith Mitchell. To Mitchell goes strong. We've already mentioned they have changed their offensive philosophy in Tallahassee. They're getting the ball out quickly and talking to Courtney Ward before the NCAA tournament. She said, we've been working on just getting out and attacking the rim. As you see there, Ward is good off the dribble, so you have to respect it. But when you cramp in the lane, you've got to kick out to Howard for the three. James a little bit too strong. Rebound to Brevard. Taylor Mingo now in running the point for Florida State. You see the offense for Florida State starting to heat up there in the last few minutes. And I think they've gotten some energy from going man to man. They started out in zone, but now they're feeding off that defensive energy on both ends. Portia Phillips comes up with it on the errant pass. Fourth turnover for the Seminoles. So impressed with Jasmine James and her ability. Going from the wing to point guard position, not an easy transition for the sophomore. Nice move with the shot clock at seven for Jasmine Hassel. She's shooting 52% from the field, Kara. You have got to guard her inside. You can't let her catch it because once she does, she's very efficient. Talking about some post players that know what to do with the rock when they put it inside. Phillips got a hand on it. But called for the foul. Her first personal. And what a power move by Brevard. This is what I'm talking about. Two feet in the paint. You got the double team. So what? I didn't know you were there. Brevard scores. Gets the foul. Look at that. That's just power. LaChina, we asked her about what do you think about when you're facing a double team. And she says when she commits to making a move, that's the only thing she's thinking about. The defenders almost disappear. Well, when you have two feet in the paint, it's too late to start thinking. You're too close <laughs> to the basket to turn back at that point. If you do try to pass it out, you can get a three-second call. Spoken like a true post player. If I'm in the paint, it's too late to think. Portia Phillips may be a bit out of her range on that shot. But a turnover for Florida State. Miller has one-on-one, -on -one, but against the ACC Defensive Player of the Year, smartly pulls up. Hassel shakes off Howard briefly. That was a challenging shot, probably, for her. Anika drives the lane. Armstrong with the rebound. Hit the deck hard. ESPN, the home court of college hoops, continues on ESPN tomorrow. Three NIT quarterfinals games. They start at 7 o'clock Eastern time in the middle. Miami of Florida taking on top NITC 
Alabama, one of the top seeds and one of the teams left on the bubble. The NIT quarterfinals on ESPN2 on Wednesday. Triple header of men's action. After all this great women's basketball, you can take a little spell to watch some of the men play. There's so much action right now in March care. I can't take it. So much basketball. We're lucky because part of our job is watching those games for China. Miller calling for it for three. Armstrong skies him for the rebound. Georgia resets. Miller again. Drops it. Coach Landers wanted a game like this for Collie to Miller, and he's getting it so far. She's shooting 38% from three in SEC games. Second in the Southeastern Conference as a freshman. You can see why she's a member of the all-freshman team. She can just play out, score the basketball. No qualms about it. She'll put it up. Turnover on Honeycutt called for the travel. Kylie to Miller scoreless in the first round victory against Middle Tennessee. In post game comments, Coach Landers said, We need more scoring from number one. She's answering the bell. The 4-5 matchup between Michigan State and Green Bay, and uh, that's nowhere for Celeste Haywish, but Adrian Ritchie with the putback right there. Green Bay has the early lead. Texas A&M, it's now a four-point lead for Gary Blair and company, and Baylor up big on West Virginia. Let's get it back out to Kara Capuano and LaChina Rocks. Trey, thank you very much. Boy, top seed Baylor, or Baylor sure had an easy time moving their way into hopefully what they repeat a repeat final four and as the top seed in the Dallas region they are the team to beat not very far from Baylor to travel Waco then Dallas Meredith Mitchell with a baseline jumper Mitchell the local from midfield Alabama she said her mom didn't make the first game but she better be here tonight that's what she said mom that's a threat quote of the day mama let me down <laughs> on a 7-2 run to bring it within two. Deluzio almost lost control, got a shot off. Natasha Howard continues to impress on the offensive glass. Florida State ball as Brevard checks back in and Tamika Willis for Georgia. Jasmine Hassel takes a seat along with Christian Honeycutt. Ward at the top, gets it straight to Brevard. 
Boy, was that another strong move by number 54. And right now, Coach Samurai has got her big lineup in. Whenever she puts in Davis and Brevard together, you better watch out. You can't double in the post. Both of them are capable of scoring. And Davis can knock down that little short jumper as well from the top of the key. Miller has just a pair of space. Can't get the shot to connect. Howard for three. In and out. There is one thing when you have size, there's another when you have size and skill. Look at how Brevard catches the basketball, turns. There was even contact with the basketball there, but she still was able to muscle it up and put it in. Yeah, it wasn't the prettiest shot, but once it tickled the twine, who cares? Coach Landers said not only does Brevard have size and skill, she has teammates who can get her the ball. And that is what the difference is. The guards who are constantly looking to create their own offense through her. And we're talking about a player that didn't even start last season, and this year she's in first team all ACC selection. Another beautiful move with the left hand this time. And she is coming off of a huge performance of 23 points and a record in postseason for Florida State, 13 rebounds in game one against Sanford. Phillips, looking to maybe work it into Willis. Shot clock at 10 now for Georgia. Is there anything she can't do? Duvard creates that turnover. Davis calling for it against Willis, who's already out there with two personal fouls. Rebound to Phillips. Working on the bar, absolutely pestered. The changing of the guard at the post, how does Brevard compare to last year's star, Jacinta Monroe? Well, when you lose a first-round WNBA draft pick like Monroe, you've got to fill in some shoes in the paint. Brevard comes in and over-exceeds expectation. You see the statistics there. Better field goal percentage, more rebounds, better scoring. I mean, and Jacinta Monroe was quite the player. You see her there actually at the game. There's Sin on the screen. Stoic. I would think she'd be smiling right now. Florida State with a six-point advantage. Sierra Bavard playing well, but apparently getting tended to perhaps her knee or her ankle. Well, I missed where she got hurt. Might be cramps. Well, you answered your own question as to why Jacinta Monroe is not know. smiling. And you have to hope that Brevard is okay because she is putting in work. And I'll tell you this, she has transformed her body. She has improved her strength. She's lost weight. She's gotten stronger. She's quicker. And that is why we have seen the change in her efficiency. Let's see if we can find out here what happened. Might have been before she went to the sideline there. Had a word with, had a word with Coach Sue. Looks like it might just be a cramp. The fact that she was able to walk over there and kind of tell them what was going on and they were doing the stretch that looked like a, we're not sure, we'll try to find out here. See if Georgia can make some headway without the superstar out on the defensive end for Florida State. Well, that won't help. Foul against Hassel, her first. And Brevard will go back to the locker room. Nine points, three of seven from the field, three rebounds, heading to the locker room right now for Florida State. We will get an update on Sierra Brevard as soon as we can. Meantime, Venuzio for three, buries it. First second three of the game. And that outside shot from Florida State changes what they do on that end of the floor. Makes them so dangerous because even though Lavar's not in the game, Davis is still a scorer inside. You can go on the block and get something from her. Mitchell, no. Georgia continues to cool down on its shooting. Well, Florida State keeps heating up from outside. George is in a 1-1-3 tandem defense right now. Armstrong for three. I 
That's her second three-pointer of the game. And she could be the difference maker. Phillips is on the bench right now. She got a little shaken up in the beginning of the game. James. Make your other here. difference maker right there. Absolutely. The defensive Jasmine James creates some of her best offense. She's terrific in transition, Kara. She's quick. She can get to the basketball. Let's see if she can get a couple more steals and get her team back into this before the half. Nice look from Ward to Davis. Chelsea Davis is going to get the lion's share of the looks that Brevard would have right now. It's been wonderful so far in the NCAA tournament. And talking about Anne Marie, Meredith Mitchell is also key. When she plays well, the Lady Bulldogs play well. She's been fairly quiet. Georgia Ball, when we return, Lady Bulldogs trying to create some offense with their defense, but it's still the Seminoles with the advantage. The NCAA Women's Championship is brought to you by Hampton Hotels. At Hampton, we love having you here. Welcome back to Auburn University, the majestic Samford Hall, Florida State with a 29-23 advantage over Georgia. On Friday, fans, we're crowning the Division II Women's Basketball Champion live from St. Joseph, Missouri for live stats, game recaps. Go to NCAA.com, your home for all 88 NCAA championships. The officials are having a conversation. We've worked it out. The battle pretty much even statistically between these two teams. The one surprising thing right now Georgia four for eight from three-point land. Not a great three-point shooting team on the season. When Colina Miller gets going and Anne Marie Armstrong, that's a different story. Nice save by Clayton. Deluzio driving baseline, open. Bad angle. Florida State's got some really early looks, good looks in transition, but hasn't been able to convert. Georgia's got to do a better job of covering the perimeter. Phillips up top, keeps it herself. Sage leadership by the senior on that offensive possession. There's so many things she can do at 6-2. She's the best rebounder in the SEC. She can put the ball on the floor. She's got a nice jump shot. 
you look at her and you say she's not that big. How is she number one? It's called heart. Ten seconds left on the shot clock for Florida State. Honeycutt with a little pull up off the dribble. Six point advantage Seminoles. Portia Phillips with a first field goal on that last possession, calling for it on the blocks. Hassel rewarded. Coming up at the half, the Home Depot halftime report with Trey Wingo. He'll take a look at what's going on and the other games currently taking place in the Dallas region. Seventh team foul by Georgia, committed by Portia Phillips, her second personal at the 130 mark of the first half. Carol, we're finding out from the Florida State locker room that Sierra Bavard's lower back has tightened up on her. And she's kind of getting that work on. You know, when you think about her posting up, and most of the time, the post defender will keep an arm in your back. Kind of the banging that goes on in the post. She's probably just starting to maybe tighten up some contact. She's tough. She'll be back. Uh, the physicality level changed from round one to round two here at Auburn Arena. You saw Portia Phillips with the welt on the forehead in the first two minutes of the half. Sierra Brevard isn't even out here on the floor, getting her back to the two in the locker room. And these two teams are playing like a Sweet 16 is on the line tonight. Leaving it all out on the floor, China. Hassel has Davis isolated. Jasmine Hassel in postseason play, including the Southeastern Conference Tournament, shooting over 70% from the floor coming into this one. Cross court to Deluzio. Ward for three. Honeycutt saves it. Florida State ball, athletic move. And in that 1-1-3 one, one, defense by Georgia, there's a lot to cover on the perimeter with Kalita Miller there and Jasmine James. That's how Ward got that shot. Deluzio lifts up. She's got eight in the first half. Deluzio has an arsenal of moves. She can stroke the three, but she's explosive off the bounce as well. Keep an eye on her. Hassel. Runs out of space, mishandles the basketball. Armstrong kicks it across to Miller. Miscommunication at the top with the shot clock running down for Georgia. And another offensive foul called against Kalita Miller, her second. But you know what, if you're Andy Landers, you say, I'll take it because she's being aggressive. She's a freshman. She kind of disappeared in the last game. You want her to get going. Only 20 seconds left here in the first half. I'll take that foul from Carlita Miller. Florida State, 22-0 with leading at the half this season. Currently trying to add to their six-point advantage. Ward for three. In and out. And the shot clock rides down. Ward hit a three at the buzzer to end the first half of the first round. Can't get it this time. Florida State with a 33-27 advantage at the half. Let's send it to Trey Wingo. All right, thanks so much. Welcome into the Home Depot Halftime Report. Trey Wingo here alongside Carol Lawson and the coach, Carolyn Peck. Florida State has the lead, but Carolyn, Florida State has... Hi, I'm Reese Davis. The journey has begun for the Capital One Cup. At the end of the school year, one men's and one women's Division I athletics program will win this Covington Award given to the school with the best on-field performance in NCAA Division I championships. Each winning school will receive $200,000 to fund student-athlete graduate-level scholarships. Follow your school and check the standings at CapitalOneCup.com. The ESPN3.com Halftime Report is presented by the Capital One Venture Card. What's in your wallet? Welcome into the ESPN3.com Halftime Report presented by Capital One. I'm Cassidy Hubbard. Coming up, we'll go inside the closet of Tom Hodges and see how his wardrobe is helping put Moorhead State women's basketball on the map.
But first, with the second round of the women's NCAA tournament coming to an end, we send things over to the college basketball scoreboard crew for a look ahead at some of next weekend's Sweet 16 matchups. Guys? Cassidy, thanks so much. Welcome in. Trey Wingo here with the sparkly Carol Lawson and the coach Carolyn Peck. Sweet 16 will be finished tonight. Eight tickets already punched. Ohio State gets in. That's the good news, Carolyn. The bad news awaiting them is Tennessee number one seed in the Dayton region, but Tennessee struggled in their second round game against Marquette. Well, they, but they were able to pull it out, and a lot of it had to do with Megan Simmons and Glory Johnson. They're playing great basketball right now. Pat Summit has gone with the small lineup and let the freshman go. Megan Simmons leads the Lady Vols in scoring. Now, she's not seen a shot she doesn't like, and she can do it from the outside. She can attack inside. Now, one of the things Pat Summit wants her to work on is distributing the basketball, and she can do that, especially when you have players like Glory Johnson that's playing the way she is inside. And she's already graduated. She doesn't have to focus on academics. She can put all her concentration on the basketball. And she, it is her goal to make sure that the Lady Vols get to a Final Four. I think when you look at this matchup specifically, Tennessee, Ohio State, Glory Johnson is key because Ohio State has two big post players when you talk about Jantel Lavender and Ashley Adams. So Glory Johnson has a matchup advantage there really on both ends of the floor because she's athletic enough to rebound with those bigs. You know, Tennessee has so much tradition. Obviously, it starts with Pat Summit and all the legacies, the eight championships, all the All-Americans. You know all this very well, Kara, having played for her. But here's the beauty of Pat Summit at Tennessee. They're always evolving. They have a new tradition now, literally, about pirates. Arg. Gotcha. Oh. I got to put on my head. Tennessee here, we're all about tradition. And once we start something, we keep doing it until, you know, until the very end. The pirate hat came from uh, when we were in the Virgin Islands, the coaches decided to buy this and say, you know, whoever, whoever played, you know, the player of the game was the pirate of the game. We're not going to just uh, hand it to anyone. I got to earn. You said, I, how many did I hit? Oh, yeah, I had eight threes. Simmons, and she knocks down the three. Kind of goes to the person who's either, really, it's just whoever impacted the game in the most positive way. So it, whether that's rebounds, steals, assists, points, combination of all those things. Someone who's like, uh, they the mostly the dirty work. Um, they dive on the floor, hustle plays, uh, rebounding, playing great defense. It's not really about a person who has the most points. It just epitomizes what a true Lady Ball Warrior champion should be and should act like. It's kind of ugly, but you know it's amazing how excited the players are to get the player. Oh! You know, sometimes the English language just fails you. There may not be words to what, think about what we just saw. Carolyn, I, Kara played, right, at Tennessee? Let's picture Kara in the pirate hat. No, we had, we had a construction hat one year. Yeah. No, that's and nice, but Carolyn, let, let's think about the pirate hat on Kara here for a second. What do you think? Let's see. Kara, turn around. Yeah. 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 Huh? No. Yeah, no? Not so much. Glad you graduated. But maybe point. a patch yeah. over one eye. That, that could work. Yes. Maybe, maybe later on, Cassidy, we'll have a patch for you for Kara. Arg. All right, let's take a look at the Spokane region now. Number one t seed in that region, of course, is Stanford. Uh, they're getting ready for a game against uh, North Carolina. North Carolina played pretty well here, but uh, Stanford's uh, the number one seed for a reason, and Carolina's going to have to be much more in control when they go up against the Cardinal. Well, you have to also contend with Stanford's front line, and North Carolina has the front line that can do that, but when you talk about Stanford, you start talking with Neko Gumake. I mean, I think she is probably the most talented player on their basketball team, certainly the most active in terms of rebounding the basketball. She's been playing exceptionally well in this tournament and really jump-started Stanford in their second-round win over St. John's. Well, Tanea Gumake is Neka's little sister, but she hasn't played like it. Only a freshman, but she does a great job of cleaning the glass. She's a power forward. She can play on the perimeter, and she will get out in transition. The two Agumake sisters 
are a handful for anybody to have to deal with. And then you add to that, Kayla Peterson for Stanford. If you want to beat Stanford, you have to find a way to disrupt their rhythm offensively. Right. That's the key. And so for Carolina, I think that it's important defensively that they come in being very aggressive and getting up into the Stanford perimeter. If I have said it once, I've said it a thousand times. You can never have enough of Gwumake's. And Tara Vanderveer has two, Shanae and Neka, and it's working well for her. Another team uh, in the Sweet 16 is Gonzaga. The Zags, of course, led by their all-everything point guard, Courtney Vanderveer. Just so people understand what she's accomplished, 2,000 points, 1,000 assists, the first in NCAA history, points and assists to crack the 2,000-point barrier and the 1,000 assist barrier. Carrie, you said it best the other night. She, she's the best point guard, and it's not even close. It's not close. And you look at some of these names, both from the women's side and the men's side as well. We know the great career Bobby Hurley had at Duke. Susie McConnell, whose tournament record Courtney Vandersloot uh, could break. Uh, in this, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, single season assist record. Courtney Vandersloot can break in the Sweet 16 game. She just does so much for Kelly Graves' team. Well, she does a nice job of seeing the play before it happens, a play ahead, and she gets all of her players in the right positions. She's a coach on the floor, and that's a luxury that Terry Graves has. Yeah, just so people understand, again, not on that list, Maya Moore did not have 2,000 points in her career. Courtney Vandersloot can distribute and she can fill it up as well and that's why they're in the Sweet 16 for the second straight year. You know, I think we're going to talk more throughout the coming weeks about Kara and the pirate hat, but that's a later discussion. Cassidy, let's send it back to you. Time now to take a look at the Capital One Cup standings. The Florida Gators came back on the final day of the 2011 Indoor Track and Field Championship to clinch their second consecutive national title. The Gators became the fourth men's program to repeat as indoor national champions. The Texas A&M Aggies finished second, followed by the BYU Cougars. On the women's side, there was much less drama as the Oregon Ducks dominated from the start to repeat as champions. The Longhorns finished second, followed by the LSU Tigers. To keep track and see who's in the lead in the overall race, log on to CapitalOneCup.com slash standings for the latest updates. Coming up, don't adjust your monitors, people. Tom Hodges is actually wearing those suits. We'll explain why after the break. You're watching ESPN3.com Halftime Report presented by Capital One. It's almost time. My hallowed grounds will become golf's biggest stage. The game's elite will challenge me. Determined to make me roar. It's almost time. First and second round coverage of the Masters, April 7th and 8th on ESPN and ESPN 3D. What about this one? What about this one? Derek, please. What about this rail? No, 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 no. Come on, grab what you can. What's going on? Thank you for pressing the self-destruct button. Why would you even install it? You have 10 seconds to reach minimum safe distance. ESPN, your NBA destination for games Wednesdays and Fridays. Opening day. It's when the new year really begins. This isn't flag day. This is ridiculously huge flag day. It's more presidential than President's Day. This is the day that Father's Wish was their day. This is Christmas, but Santa has a black beard and delivers presents nobody wants. I wrapped it myself. On baseball's biggest stage, this is the anniversary no one ever forgets. Opening day, March 31st on ESPN. Telecast presented by Dick Sporting Goods. Welcome back. Over the years, the Moorhead State women's basketball team has struggled to attract the top recruits and even a consistent fan base, averaging less than 1,000 people at their home games. But when Tom Hodges took over as head coach last May, one of his main goals was to bring more attention to the program and was willing to do so by any means necessary. His strategy starts in his closet. The guy wears suits that Bozo would probably find offensive. All part of a publicity stunt to get his team noticed. And while well, you got to hand it to the guy, it's kind of working. I'm Tom Hodges, head women's basketball coach at Moorhead State University. And I know what style is all about. The wild and crazy and bright 
patterns are my favorite because they draw the most reactions. It takes a lot of coordination so you don't just look like an absolute clown on the sideline. Stay down! Sandwich, sandwich, sandwich! What in the world? Coach and I were thinking of different ways and different gimmicks to promote the program here. It was about the same time the uh, British Open was going on and John Daly was getting more press for his clothing than he was for his wonderful play. I sent the email to Loudmouth Golf saying we're looking to do the same and get the same type of publicity here at Moorhead State. Within just two or three minutes, the owner basically told him, if you'll wear the gear, we'll send as much of it in there as you can stand. I knew he was serious when, when he got all of our sizes. We purposely did not show the players any of the suits before our game at Kentucky. All the coaches come stepping out in this outfit, and we're all just like, are they serious right now? <laughs> It would have been nice for a heads up that he was he was coming on with something like that. I love the enthusiasm. That's tremendous. Play as hard as you possibly can. When you need a blow, let us know. The coaches that we faced on the opposite sidelines have had fun with it. Always greeted with a smile. Coach, how's it going? How's it going? It's going well. I'm How are you? you what, bud, you're the most colorful thing. Golly, these children just drive me crazy, fella. God to mighty blue. God to mighty blue. God to mighty blue. God to mighty. God to mighty. With the suit on, you would probably think he's like this loud, All right, get back. obnoxious. Come on, ladies. Type of person. He's like the total opposite of that. People now think I just wake up in it and I go to sleep in it. Outside of games, just wear very conservative things. You have to, have to, have to get the premium starch with no flaking. My wife, Hillary, is not totally on the loudmouth bandwagon just yet. <laughs> She's just not totally prepared to go all in and coordinate with me, but we're working on it. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. It's, it's pretty spicy. Great job, Linda Dixon! We've been a good team for a long time, and now people are, are realizing it and it's because of his suits. We hope when people think of Moorhead State, they think of a championship program that's the absolute best dressers in America. Together. Wow, just wow. All right, that's a wrap on the ESPN3.com Halftime Report presented by Capital One. I'm Cassidy Hubbard, enjoy the second half. We've got a ring, but if you don't have that ring, the world's on fire. Isn't it amazing what a ring does in sports? Colin Cowherd, weekdays at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific on ESPN Radio. This is the NBA on ESPN Radio. I'm Kevin Winter coming up on the NBA Tonight postgame show. The San Antonio Spurs got to be without Tim Duncan. General Manager R.C. Buford will give us a status update on Duncan's sprained left ankle. Plus, we know the NFL's dealing with a lockout. We'll let you hear why one insider believes the NBA is actually in a worse position than the NFL. Final 255 in Atlanta. It's all Chicago. 114-77 alongside Hall of Famer Dr. Jack Ramsey. Here is Bill Rosinski. 40-point win last night at home by the Bulls over Sacramento. They're up 37 tonight in Atlanta. I think you can go through the history of this league and not find back-to-back -back performances like the Bulls have put on here. This has been very, very impressive. And it doesn't stop with the starting five. The reserves come in and play the same way that the starters do. Maybe not as skillfully, but the same program, the same unselfishness and intensity. Chicago works the ball. Brewer takes the jumper. It's a short rebound by Atlanta. They worked the shot clock inside 10 and then took the jumper. Couldn't get it to fall. Teague now for Atlanta. Left to right. They move the basketball. Teague's been the lone bright spot in the second half. All 20 of his points. He didn't play in the first half. We welcome you back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One in second round action. Six seed Georgia 
trailing three seed Florida State by six as we're ready to start the second half at Auburn Arena. We welcome you inside. I'm Kara Capuano along with former Wake Forest standout LaChina Robinson. These two teams really won their first round games, LaChina, with smothering defense, but the offenses weren't shy exerting their will early in this one. Kara, we've seen scoring, scoring, scoring on both ends of the basketball. If you're a coach Landers, you're saying we're hitting the three point shot. It's a good night for us. And we saw him put it up early and often. Carlita Miller, the freshman, and Marie Armstrong as well. Georgia not particularly a good three-point shooting team, so this is a sign if they can start to get a little inside-out play going on. And for Florida State, the Knowles doing what they've done so well all year. Alexa Deluzio hits the three, but of course the force inside. First team all ACC selection in Sierra Brevard dominated in the paint until she had some tightening in her lower back and some spasms and had to be taken to the locker room to get the back worked on. She is back on the floor to start the second half. Some of the trends that you're seeing in that first half, LaChina. Well, Georgia did some great scoring off of their defense. You see 12 of their 27 points are off Florida State turnovers. But I like the rebounding by Florida State, in particular on the offensive end. They got some second chance opportunities, and then you see the balance again. Three-point field goals, two-pointers. They did a little bit of everything from everywhere on the floor. Florida State with a 12-3 to advantage in second chance points in that first half, and that helped them maintain that lead, even with Brevard in the locker room. Florida State starting off with a man-to-man, -man, which I'm happy to see because I like the energy in the man-to-man -man defense there in the first half. But it's smothering the Georgia offense right now. James steps back for a three. In the first round game, 14 of her team leading 18 came in the second half. Let's see if James will get a similar surge in this one. She's a game time player. She knows when things are starting to get tight. And in the second half, her team's gonna need the score. Similarly, Courtney Ward, quiet offensively in the first half, scoreless, but seven assists. She gets on the board. James again for three. Big screen set by Phillips to keep the Florida State defense at bay to no avail. Rivard working on Hassel. Phillips comes in for the double. Nice defense by number 21. Very good, and the double team was timely that time, so Brevard didn't have a chance to try to make a move or pass out before Phillips got there. Alexa Deluzio will head to the free throw line. That foul called on Meredith Mitchell, her first personal. I like Deluzio. She is a player that, again, just has an arsenal. And what I like like her in particular is her strength. She's very strong. She can make explosive moves. She can pull up and shoot the three-point shot. She's good, Kara, on offense. The China coverage of the Division I Men's NCAA Championship will continue Thursday on CBS, TNT, 7 Eastern. For more information, check out NCAA.com. Working on Delizio. Nice move by the senior. Delizio gets stuck. She's undersized and they're trying to defend Phillips. And then Phillips with a steal. James quickly stopped by Courtney Ward. Oh, Mitchell had the lane if she wanted it. Fought a little too much. Turned over the basketball. Deluzio driving baseline. We saw her do that several times in the first half. Had a better angle to the basket this time. She can take over a game. I've seen her, in particular, in the second half of ball games, just really relax on the offensive end. And Coach Sue said she felt like in game one, she passed up too many shots, so she's being more aggressive. And that's good for the Knowles. That's what they need her to do. Alexa Deluzio, when Florida State was here before a non-conference play in a game, November 15th, 23 points to lead the Seminoles. A career high set here at Auburn Arena, so she can score on these rims. I was here to see that game, and, and her strength, again, and explosiveness, just can score in a variety of ways. She's a player that 
tore her ACL and redshirted her freshman year. So she had a chance to watch, but she's continued to get strong. She's very aggressive and she's not afraid. Delusio hits the second. She has 10 in the game to lead all scorers. Henry Armstrong at the top of the key, hands it off to Miller. Mitchell has the key to drive, but short on the shot. Little dribble weave offense there by Georgia. And you see Coach Landers look at Meredith Mitchell said, it's all right. He needs her to keep her, hot, her confidence high. Again, when she's in the flow, Georgia's at their best on offense, but she's got to be a threat. And again, it's Mitchell with the ball. Too much on the pass to James. Ninth turnover for Georgia. That'll bring out the crossed arms of Andy Landers. Coach Landers was very happy with his team's performance in the first game. They showed some balance. Middle Tennessee, a very good team, well coached. In particular, really happy with their defensive pressure. Held Middle Tennessee to a low 41 points. The X factor, though, 21 turnovers in that game for Georgia, and that's what Coach Lander said needs to improve to make it through this second round matchup. Ninth turnover as well for Florida State now. We're talking about two teams that played very deep in the NCAA tournament last year. Georgia getting to the Sweet 16, Florida State to the Elite Eight, where they ran into the buzzsaw that was the Huskies. The buzzsaw that was the Huskies, not so buzzsaw this year, so we'll see. Tina Charles is gone, but they've still got Maya Moore. Brevard just drops Hassel like a bad habit with the move. And Hassel's a good-sized girl. That's not easy to do. But Brevard shaking off the tightness in her back from the first half. Obviously, she's fine. Hassel out there with two fouls, so she's got to be careful. Still early in the second half here. And that's a foul whistled on Honeycutt. <laughs> Sierra Brevard gets two feet in the paint. And you watch how her teammates look for her. They know where she's going to be. She's going to clear space. She'll show you numbers right under the goal so you can get in the basket. All she has to do is turn and shoot. See on the stat sheet, 6'4 for Brevard, 6'2 for Hassel. But it just feels like she has a, a taller presence than that, McKee. I don't know if it's that finesse element that we were complimenting in the first round. You have to watch sizes on the roster. Kara, I think I might have been 6'6", a couple times, 6'7", <laughs> throughout the course of my career. I'm only really 6'4", so I don't know. Isn't it funny how the shorter players always list taller and the taller players, you just never know. Some like to list shorter, some like to list taller. Tying it off right now on the Georgia offense. James wants the basketball off of the screen. She's not getting it. Baseline take for Mitchell and Coach Landers imploring the team to get back on defense and turn around as quickly as possible. Deluzio denied on the baseline by Armstrong. Rivard, what a perfect pass for Courtney Ward. She has not scored a lot in this game, but she has set up her teammates. Nine assists for the senior leader. That's the synchronization that Coach Landers talked about on offense. What a pass. Let's take another look. Courtney Ward may not be scoring a lot of baskets, but boy, she's making her teammates look strong. 42-34 Florida State.
42-34, Florida State advantage over Georgia last night. America watched an incredible assist performance by Courtney Vandersloot of Gonzaga. How about Courtney Ward of Florida State here? Well, Ward sees the floor good as any point guard in the country. Watch the play here develop. You freeze there. Brevard's asking for the basketball. Defender cannot see Brevard. She's got her head turned watching the ball, and she gets stuck right there. Nice pass and the finish by Brevard inside. I believe they call that threading the needle. I was impressed by the placement. Obviously, she's a senior passing to a junior, and they're used to that, but it was where she put it so that Brevard could just put the shot up. Pin perfect. Georgia needs to make a little run here. Florida State is looking confident and commanding as it continues to build on the halftime lead. Armstrong for three. Too late crashing the offensive glass. Chastity Clayton's been a rebounding menace this tournament. That another turnover for Florida State. Something to keep an eye on this possession for Georgia is Christian Honeycutt, who is the ACC Defensive Player of the Year, is on Jasmine James. Coach Simrao knows the importance of James, especially in the second half, and how she likes to look to score. She's going to put Honeycutt on her and try to slow her down. Honeycutt charged with always the best perimeter players in the ACC all season and really shut those players down. Expect her to have similar success. James, short on the shot. Clayton with her ninth rebound of the game off the bench. And she had a good showing on rebounding the other night. Seven rebounds and not a lot of minutes. Another offensive rebound for Florida State. James intercepts the pass like a defensive back for the Georgia Bulldogs. Miller has her teammates back. And that's a terrific play by a freshman that didn't give up on it. Most of the time you'll see teammates just retreat because you think James is going to make the shot, but Miller follows it up. Brevard again working on Hassel. Another second chance for Florida State. Ward for three. Montgomery, Alabama's own Courtney Ward with a pair of three-pointers in the game now to complement nine assists. Ward is so underrated. She's one of the best point guards in the country, but because her team has so much balance on offense and she doesn't put up gaudy numbers in terms of scoring, you don't hear her name a lot. Mitchell looking at Hassel, calls her own shot. Poorly aimed. And that's just quickness right there by Jasmine James. Quickness and intuition gets Georgia closer, but the Seminoles are pulling away up nine.
Georgia head coach Andy Landers passionately imploring the Lady Bulldogs to do a better job. The great thing about hoops, relationships are formed early. Courtney Ward and Meredith Mitchell, Georgia and Florida State, played on the Alabama Roadrunners, Roadrunners together. Great team photo here, LaChina. Kicking it old school with the do-rag, Meredith Mitchell. Well, and you see that band in the background. Now, we would pack it in. 10 or 12 in a six passenger minivan <laughs> AAU. You know, you only have one parent that is off for the weekend. You did what you could to get enough players to the game. And how fun to look back at those memories. And a great homecoming for a couple of Alabama kids here. Meredith Mitchell out of Midfield, Alabama. Courtney Ward out of Montgomery, Alabama. A couple of other players, fans at home that are savvy might have recognized. Kayla Melson of Ole Miss, Courtney Jones of LSU, Yvonne Anderson of Texas also on that team. Typically stocked AAU squad, the Alabama Roadrunners. Man, with that team, they must have gone undefeated. I need to check the records because they had enough talent on that team to make a serious run. Crazy hands on that team, too. Great guard presence. Ward Melson in the backcourt. I'm in. I don't know who you play at the point and who you play at the two, because Nelson and Ward can both handle and stroke the three. How about Sierra Brevard laying out the body with a bad back to force the jump ball there? Anne Marie Armstrong checks in for Meredith Mitchell. Brevard, the junior out of Sandusky, Ohio. But she talked to Andy Landers back in the day. He thought about taking a look at the center, but Georgia was not in her plans. It was Ohio State, Maryland, and Florida State. Came down to those three for Brevard. Seminoles fans elated that she chose Tallahassee to play her college hoops. Portia Phillips with a hook shot won't fall. Georgia needs to start hitting some shots for China. And that's a good look inside. It's one-on-one -on -one coverage in the post. Portia Phillips has got to knock that down. Mission Honeycutt continues to impress on the offensive glass, but there's another Jasmine James steal. And the finish. Now, in talking to Jasmine James about how Georgia's tightened up their defense, she said there's a difference between containing and gaining an advantage from your defense. They want to turn you over and make you take bad shots, not just contain you on the defensive end. They want to turn it into offense. Clayton runs out of space. Nice defense from pass. Award for three. Keyboard for Phillips and then a foul called. The NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Championship continuing on Saturday, and we are in the regionals. Regional semifinals from Dayton kick off at noon Eastern. Ohio State top seed Tennessee, then six seed Oklahoma taking on Notre Dame. ESPN, your exclusive home for all 63 games of the NCAA Women's Championship. That foul was charged to Christian Honeycutt, her second personal. Fourth team foul for Florida State. Very different in the first half when Georgia was whistled for 18 fouls to only three for the Knowles. Armstrong has the room for the three. The question's going to be, if it can Georgia score in the half court? James is just all over the place. She's she explosive is. on She's defense. She's a water dog out there right now. My goodness, LaChina. Jasmine James trying to single-handedly will her team back into this game with her defensive prowess. There she goes. JJ on the run, but the Bulldogs still chasing.
Welcome back to Auburn Arena, where Florida State has a 45-38 lead over the Georgia Lady Bulldogs. Sue Simrau, when asked about Andy Landers, said it impresses her that he's had such consistent success. To do that in a Big Six conference, always field a competitive team, very special. And then about Sue Simrau, Coach Landers paid a major compliment. He said she does things the right way. Players can tell she recruits and coaches for the players, and that is what has generated better recruiting for Florida State. Success and just the knowledge, the reputation that she's built. A lot of respect on both ends from those coaches as they talk about each other's programs, but that ball was tipped. Every man for himself, Kara. Sierra Bernard almost came up with it there. Heads up play by Jasmine James as she's falling down and just put it far enough out of the range. Armstrong for three. Georgia needed that basket. And one thing Coach Landers told us about this matchup is they need to keep this score low. Right now, Florida State 45 points, Georgia 41. He wants them to keep it around the 60, 65 point area in order to win. Ward for three to answer. Ice water. And I don't like the way that George is rotating in that zone. They're in a 1 1 3 tandem. The rotations are not crisp in the zone. They're not getting to where they need to. And Florida State's really spreading the floor on offense. Portia Phillips with the jumper. Brevard with another rebound. She's got four. Caruzio looking at Chelsea Davis. So Florida State with their big lineup. We didn't see the two posts, Davis and Rivard, play together against Sanford. That would have been a defensive matchup nightmare against the tiny Bulldogs of Sanford. Shot clock at five. Caruzio passes it. shot by Courtney Ward. I told you, Kara, she can My score. Goodness. She was beyond NBA range. Right now, she is turning up a notch. Jordan's going to have to extend their defense. That was a rainbow of a shot heaved up with the shot clock winding down. Wow. Big time players make big time shots. The China tells me that over and over. James for three to answer. I knew that was going in as soon as she fired up. We had the perfect angle. She wears number 10 for reasons that she loved the play of Saudi around truth. And that is why she came to play for the University of Georgia. And she has got that next level. Every player doesn't have that next gear. Jasmine James has it. Exchanging threes right now, these two teams. Shot clock at seven. Mika Willis checks out, Jasmine Hassel checks in for Georgia, Davis checks out, and Clayton checks in for the Seminoles. And take a look here, nothing materializing, but the three ball is by Ward, she puts it up. Courtney Ward has scored the last nine points for Florida State as they continue to maintain what has felt like a six to eight point lead most of the second half for the Seminoles. When you think about the success that Coach Samurai has had in this program, Courtney Ward has been the center point. The point guard controls so many aspects of the game and it's important that you're an extension of your coach and that describes the senior. Sierra Bavard heading to the bench with three personal fouls now. But the scoring has been coming from the backcourt of late. They like to score inside out, though. See if Chelsea Davis can handle the load. Armstrong for three. No. Big offensive board for Mitchell. Hassel working on Davis. Travel. 11th turnover for Georgia. And that's a better possession for Georgia in the half court. They have got to have that balance. James right now working on her own. And Marie Armstrong hitting some big shots too. But you got to be able to get it in the paint and get some production. And Marie Armstrong had eight points in nine minutes in the first half. She's hit three threes in this game. And that's a sophomore class between James and Armstrong. Very strong for the Lady Bulldogs. The senior with the rebound, Phillips. 
James is open on the wing, but Mitchell keeps it herself. Good choice by the junior from midfield. Now things are starting to heat up. There's some scoring going on, Kara. This is ACC shooting at will. <laughs> this is not going to be a cakewalk. Florida State calls a timeout. When you're having two teams with an offensive flurry like that, what made Coach Simrau call this timeout, LaChina? Well, Coach Simrau saying right now, hey, we've got a couple players for Georgia that have stepped up. We need to keep our eye on. Meredith Mitchell's the X Factor. Anne Marie Armstrong's an X Factor. You come into this game thinking primarily about Castle, Phillips, and James. We've got some other options. I was telling Meredith she had Jasmine open on the wing and look at the good choice she made instead. Well, that's just confidence. You know, she has not played well up until this point in terms of shooting. But when you know your coach has confidence in you, as Landers does in Mitchell, you're not afraid to pull up and hit a shot. And that was a big one. With former Wake Forest standout LaChina Robinson, I'm Kara Capuano at Auburn Arena, one of the finest new facilities in the whole country. Second round action, three seed Florida State with a 51-46 advantage over six seed Georgia. Both teams scoring at will in the last several minutes of the possession. Shots flying. Well, Georgia's gonna come out and extend their 2-3 zone. Out beyond the three-point line. Luzio tried to get to that soft spot in the middle. She couldn't. They tried to pass into it. Turnover, Florida State. That's Georgia's best defense. I like when they're in that 2-3 zone. They're so long. Armstrong for three. Crashes her own rebound. Wow. Kara Amory Armstrong had 17 points versus Stanford last year in the Sweet 16 loss. She was only a freshman. She's not afraid to play big in March. Georgia on a 7-0 run to pull it within three. Honeycutt can't get the roll. What is James looking for offensively here with China? She's looking for Anne Marie off the curl, no question. She is a great spot up shooter. She can also work off the curl and get a look as well. She's been getting some great screens from Phillips. Armstrong again tries to crash the offensive glass, but Ward is there. Numbers for Florida State. Delusio baseline. Heating up, 7-0 run. Greens, Lady Bulldogs within three in favor Florida State.
Welcome back to Auburn Arena. Three-point game. Florida State with the advantage over Georgia. Lady Bulldogs have gone on a charge, and really, I think it started with the defense of Jasmine James to create some offensive confidence. She's so much fun to watch because she's got that fire about her. She knows when to turn up the juice, and in the second half, she has been dynamic, getting in the passing lane, creating opportunities for her team. She's got that fire, Kara, and when she lights it, the rest of the team catches on, and she gets going. Jasmine James on her Twitter page, LaChina, you'll appreciate that. Her self-description, you'll learn the name, point blank, period. Well, she's a kid from Memphis, very well-spoken as we had a conversation with her yesterday. We're working on a research paper the last few days, too, throughout the NCAA tournament, so she takes care of her academics. But just a good kid, she's done everything that coach has asked her to do. She played the wing last year, played big minutes for the Lady Bulldogs, plays the point now because they need to fill the position. Very unselfish. Woke up at 4.30 in the morning, the morning of the first round games to finish that paper. Dedicated student athlete. James, no. Natasha Howard with the rebound, gets it straight to the senior, Courtney Ward. Courtney Ward, Florida State's career assist leader and career three-point leader. What a great career she's had for three. Brevard with the rebound. Phillips tried to block it. But that will be a foul. One thing that Coach Samurai talked to her team about is that Georgia will gamble out of that zone. We saw in that rotation, they tried to deny the pass to the wing, and Florida State has to continue to move the ball around if they want to get a good look. Florida State has yet to score since Sierra Brevard picked up her third foul. She ends up getting the first point. And that was the third personal foul on Portia Phillips, but now under six minutes left in the second half. It's time to lay it out on the line and punch the ticket to the Sweet 16. 15 points for Sierra Brevard to lead all scores. Phillips wants it, Howard streaks in. Phillips doing a good job in that possession. The screener is always open. That's one of those rules in basketball to keep in mind, especially when Anne Marie Armstrong is being aggressive. The defense shifts towards her. Portia Phillips was open going towards the middle. That second foul on Natasha Howard, seventh team foul for Florida State. So George is shooting. Lady Bulldogs, on the other hand, have only committed three team fouls. Opportunity, perhaps, to make up some of that five-point differential at the line. They've got to continue to play aggressive to try to get back in this thing. There's the defense again for Georgia. Good trap out of that 2-3 zone defense for Georgia. What a competitor Jasmine James wanted that shot, despite the long, lengthy arm of Howard flying in. There's the trap on the freshman Howard, and James turns all the juice right here. Of course, they can't keep up with her foot speed right now. James, all freshman team unanimous selection last year. Second team all SEC this year. The team leading scorer, assist maker, and leads the team in minutes played. Continuing in the footsteps of the legacy of Ashley Houts, the four-year Iron Woman Again, for Georgia. One of those sophomores in that class had 27 points against Oklahoma State last year in the NCAA tournament, so she can put it up and really score. Five minutes left in the second half. Foul is called. Christian Honeycutt took a chance. Christian Her Honeycutt third. stuck with the assignment of Anne-Marie Armstrong. She's the best defender for Florida State. Coach Sam Morrow takes her off of James and puts her on Armstrong because she has been a huge factor on the offensive end. Armstrong just a 63% shooter from the free throw line. Uses every bit of the rim to get the first one to drop in the front end of the one-on-one. We talked about her versatility in basketball. 
She was all state in volleyball and track as well in high school. Two big makes for a 63% free throw shooter. She's got 15 to lead Georgia. It's a two point ball game in Auburn Arena. Bard, Deluzio. Jasmine Hassel whistled for her third personal. So now Portia Phillips and Jasmine Hassel both with three, four personals, excuse me, for Hassel. Deluzio steps back. Howard with the offensive rebound. And a travel. Costly turnover for Florida State. The senior, Portia Phillips, with a smart move on the defensive end. She backs off of Howard. Howard expecting the physical contact. And as a result, the travel just played her a little differently on that possession. Georgia with an opportunity to tie or take the lead. Mitchell, baseline. Ooh, she gave it a little fist pump back for that one. Georgia is really gelling on the offensive end of the floor right now. Florida State needs a score to break this momentum. Tied at 53s. Howard. Thought that would trickle in off the glass. It looked on point. Georgia finally found a defense that everyone is comfortable in that 2-3 zone. I've watched them play a lot this year. It's their best defense to me. They play it very well. Mitchell gets Howard off of her feet. Georgia takes the lead. Huge shot by Mitchell. We talked about that shot earlier in the half. She hit that one. Now her confidence is up. Brevard to answer. Midfield, Alabama's own Meredith Mitchell heating up at the right time for Georgia as the Lady Bulldogs take their first lead since 11 to 10 with 12 minutes left in the first. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by the Capital One Cup. Learn more and check the standings at CapitalOneCup.com. Welcome back to Auburn Arena. 
Georgia has taken the lead over Florida State, 55-53. Lady Bulldogs use their defense to create some offense, and then it's just been an exchange of shots. Georgia's been making them. The junior leader exerting her will. Meredith Mitchell being aggressive. She started out rough, but when you are a junior, the only junior on this team, you have had some rough shooting nights, and you understand that you just have to stick with it. Coach Landers brought Meredith Mitchell with him to media day because he said this will be the most important player on the team this year. We need her to play at her best to be as good as we can be. In the meantime, as Mitchell starts to shine, Jasmine Hassel has fouled out for Georgia. Six points, four rebounds for Hassel. All six of her points coming in the first half. Sierra Brevard, when you're an undersized post player, that would be a tall load. Well, there's a couple players that are gonna have to step up for Georgia in her absence. Anne-Marie Armstrong already has. The freshman, Kalita Miller, gonna have to play big minutes here down the stretch. Sierra Bavard now six of eight from the free throw line for Florida State. Sierra Bavard hampered in the first half by lower back tightness. Missed the end of the first half, went to the locker room and had it worked out. Leaves her team with 16. James gets inside position, but just short. Seal. She had drawn two. Clayton was open. It's going to be a costly foul on Georgia if it's on Portia Phillips. Fans, ESPN, your home court of college hoops. And how about NIT quarterfinal action on ESPN2? Coverage starts at 7. College of Charleston taking on Wichita State. The nightcap, Northwestern Washington State. The NIT quarterfinals on ESPN2 Wednesday. That foul was charged to Meredith Mitchell, just her second personal. And this is one thing that Florida State has done better than Georgia early in the season and in this game is get to the free throw line and convert. Florida State takes back the lead, 56-55, behind the free throw shooting of Sierra Brevard. And you can see Portia Phillips is wincing. Something happened there on that box out. Walking a little gingerly. Paulina Miller for three. Big basket for the freshman. She is shooting the three well. You have to get out on her. 38% in SEC play. You have to know where she is at all times. Clayton baseline. Oh, the rebound in and out of the hands of Phillips, and then a foul is charged. Jasmine James called her first personal. Seventh team foul, however. So now both teams shooting. <laughs> Honey Cut in her 129th game, Courtney Ward has played in 134. Coach Steve Semrau said those are the leaders that need to impart to their teammates. One and done. The time is now. They've been in the battles. They have been in the trenches. Coach Semrau said the biggest asset she has on this team is two leaders on the perimeter in Ward and Honeycutt. They are the captains, they are the voice. Sierra Bavard, so they do all their talking by the way they play. She said Ward is the heart and Honeycutt is the head. To me, they're almost interchangeable. Anne-Marie Armstrong checks out of the game for Georgia. Tamika Willis back in with Portia Phillips down low. Clayton hits the second. One point game at Auburn Arena, 2.30 to play, Georgia advantage. Willis sets the screen for Mitchell, around the horn to James. Phillips working on Brevard. Brevard bobbles the rebound to herself. Working on another double-double with 18 and 9. Time out. Florida State. 
Coach Simrau calls the timeout. Two minutes, LaChina, 58-57 Georgia. Take us inside one of these huddles. What are the discussions? Well, Coach Samrao called that timeout, Kara, because she wants to set up the offense here. She wants to talk about the look she wants to get against that zone by Georgia. She stressed yesterday getting to the short corner, making crisp passes, and making the defense work. What about Coach Landers, being that Coach Simrau called the timeout? What is he telling his troops? Well, he likes that zone with his team. They're playing great in that 2-3 zone, but they've got to rebound out of it. So he's saying, get to the basketball quickly. Then we got to run. We've got to make Florida State pay. We have the advantage in terms of quickness in the open court. With former Wake Forest standout with China Robinson, I'm Kara Capuano in Auburn Arena for the second round thriller between six seed Georgia and three seed Florida State. Both sweet 16 teams last year, Florida State made it all the way to the Elite Eight for the first time in program history. Andy Landers has coached Georgia to 18 sweet 16s, 10 Elite Eights, and five Final Fours. Has never won it all. Shot clock at eight for the Seminoles. Foul charged, Anne Marie Armstrong, her third. Brevard is just a lot to handle. Her strength and her ability to take up space in the lane. Even if she doesn't touch the basketball, she's gonna make your defense work. She's gonna stay down there and play physical and collect fouls like you just saw her do there. Brevard continues to shoot confidently from the free throw line. Nine of 12 in this game. 19 points, nine rebounds for number 54. 58-58, tie ball game. Coach Landers is talking to his team saying, let's play good, clean defense. With Hassel fouling out, that creates a challenge. There's only so much he can do in terms of body in the game. So he's saying we have to make the most of it. If Anne Marie has to play down low and help out some, she can't foul the bar. Men's and Women's Basketball Championship is not the only national championship soon to be settled. NCAA Men's Ice Hockey is skating toward the Frozen Four. Puck drops on regional semifinals starting this Friday at 3 Eastern on ESPNU and ESPN3.com. For more information, log on to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. Tied at 58. Brevard misses the second. the score we welcome the national audience to Auburn Arena where Georgia the sixth seed in the Dallas region has come back to challenge the three seed Florida State three ties and six lead changes in what has been an outstanding game with LaChina Robinson I'm Kara Capuano a possession Georgia wishes it had back well, that's good defense by Florida State they were in the zone but they were aggressive about their rotation they were able to get a hand on tap it out now they're on the offensive end Looking, of course, to try to get it to Sierra Brevard, but now a possession Florida State wishes it had back. And that's it's tightening a, up a little bit, LaChina. That's a huge turnover by Florida State. You see Honeycutt, she does not make those types of mistakes often. Georgia. 18th turnover by the Seminoles. Not necessarily the stars we thought would be leading the charge. It's been balanced effort, both teams. Well, that's how it works in the NCAA tournament. You need an extra score to step up and open things up on the offensive end. Anne Marie has done that for the Georgia Bulldogs, who throughout the course of the year have not had a consistent three-point shot. Anne Marie Armstrong leading the way with 15 for Georgia. The seniors getting it done for Florida State. Courtney Ward is a big time player. I've been saying all year, she's underrated. She can knock down shots. She sees the floor. She has been the leader, the extension of Coach Samaral for her entire four years in Tallahassee. 
Amory Armstrong did not start this game, but she is Georgia's leading scorer, the sophomore out of Norcross, Georgia, where she won 10 state championships for the Wesleyan School. Coach Landers told us now that she's a sophomore and can focus solely on basketball, not also volleyball and track and everything else she did, she's really starting to hone her skills. And she's got one of the most difficult jobs on the floor because she can play two, three, four, five. She has played all of those positions in one game, Kara. So she's got a lot of responsibility on a short roster. Under a minute left, tied at 58. Slow to develop something here in the half court set. Swinging it to Armstrong. Front iron. And then charged for the foul, trying to reach around her fourth. And that is a frustration foul there by Armstrong. She was not in position there to get a steal. I think she was going to try to tap it away. Yeah, I think play. she was just trying to move it out of Deluzio's grasp. Alexa Deluzio, one of three Seminoles in double figures in this second round matchup. And there is a timeout. Timeout. Andy Landers wants to talk about it. Georgia. Excited to be bringing you one of the best games of the NCAA tournament with China Robinson and Kara Capuano. Uh, the resumes of these two programs, we talked about it. Georgia, a traditional powerhouse in women's basketball, but Florida State, a team now in this last decade that has really asserted itself as kind of the next guard, one of the consistence of the new generation of competitive teams behind Sue Semrau. Coach Semrau coached this team to an elite eight last season so they know what it's like to go deep in March. And of course, Coach Landers, the tradition on that is the experience, the final fours. These players came for this opportunity with the game on the line to step up and make big plays. We've talked to players from both teams about how they were recruited into the program. And these coaches are enforcing championship goals both. I will tell you an interesting thing. Alexa Deluzio is on the line right now. Her sister that plays for Duke, Crystal Thomas, was on the free throw line yesterday against Maris to nail some big free throws to clinch that win. Now Deluzio, again, her sister, who was excited for her yesterday in the same position with an opportunity here to give Florida State the lead. Georgia now out of timeouts. Florida State, two left. Possession arrow, Lady Bulldogs. Both teams shooting down the stretch when fouls are charged. And Deluzio gives the Seminoles the lead. Who's your go-to player for Georgia right now, LaChina? It's been tight, but I will tell you this. The attention right now is on Armstrong. Honeycutt is guarding her. You have to go to Meredith Mitchell, your junior. Alita Miller hit some big threes in the first half. Portia Phillips, open lane to the basket. Oh! In and out. Jump ball is called. Georgia has the ball. There was some confusion there on that offensive possession for Georgia. You could see players looking around. There wasn't a lot of movement, but you get your the ball in the hands of your senior in Portia Phillips. Just misses that one. But the tie-up by Mitchell on the SEC all-defensive team. You can see why. Timeout, Time Florida State. Oh, the palpable. Frustration, tension, anxiety. Carla Fountain, one of the officials, just had to tell Coach Simrau, step back, Coach, calm down. This is the ACC versus the SEC. This is huge. You're in the Southeast, bragging rights on the line, Kara. There's going to be some heated discussion here. Wow. Ten seconds left. Georgia with the ball. What is Coach Landers drawing up, LaChina? I say he goes to James. She's a big-time player. She makes plays, but also everyone else has to rebound in case she misses.
taking the floor for what might be the final possession. We welcome the national audience to what is possibly the last 10 seconds of this second round game in Auburn Arena. Florida State up 59-58. Georgia with the ball. Time is winding down. Portia Phillips, the senior, in and out. But the putback falls. And one for Jasmine James. She what game a big top shot. Player. I told you, Kara, James is a gamer. She has been waiting all day for this moment. I was reading her tweet. She's been excited. She talked about taking advantage of an opportunity. This is a big opportunity for the Lady Bulldogs of Georgia trying to get back to the Sweet 16 a 19th time. Take a look at this. Portia with the shot. It was almost it was in. halfway down the cylinder. And James, one of the smallest players on the court is able to get in and muscle. That's just pure desire. You can't measure heart. You've got Brevard and Davis right down there, two great rebounders. James comes up with it. Both of these teams have played so valiantly in this game. Balanced scoring, athletic, physical, total contrast to their first round games, which they really dominated to get to this point. Take a look here. You get the hand, the ball in the hands of your senior. Phillips takes the shot, misses. And look at the emotion from James. You gotta love it. She is pumped. That was the fourth personal foul on Sierra Brevard. The superstar for Florida State who's had another exquisite game. 19 points, 10 rebounds, double doubles now in both rounds. And if you are Sue Samrao, I already know what you have in mind, and that's Courtney Ward. I have seen her hit buzzer beater after buzzer beater this entire year. I saw her do it in ACC play. We saw her do it at the half on Sunday. She can hit from long range. You got to get the ball in her hands. Take another look here. Listen for the whistle. The play materializing. Let's see if we can hear the whistle here. Sounded like right around 3.2. That's what it looked like. Look at Coach Landers getting mauled by the bench. That's the one to put in the frame and ultimately <laughs> win this one. Looked like 3-4 even. They've also changed the foul assignment there. Chelsea Davis called for the foul, so Sierra Brevard had three. Brevard with her 10th double-double of the season, 13th in her career, so that shows you the impact she's had in this junior year. This is trying to hear this whistle. Between 3-2 and 3.4. Is yeah. what it seemed like to me. Good call. Oh, when it comes down to the milliseconds, you really feel like you're a part of the madness of March La China. And James just sneaks in. Look at the bench here. Take Coach Landers out. Grab him by the tie. <laughs> and Coach Simrell on the other end. Telling Carla Fountain, I'm just concerned about when the clock was, the whistle came with the clock. She knows that she needs as much time as possible to make a play here. Again, you cannot count out Florida State late. She's got the players to make a play. Something interesting that happened yesterday in the Penn State-DePaul game is that Coach Bruno did a perfect job. He knew the ball was going to go to Alex Bentley, took her out, basically double teamed her so she didn't have enough time to make a play. Will Georgia do something like that with Ward? Because I am sure Coach Samurai wants the ball in her hands. Our officiating crew, Sam Hall, Carla Fountain, Beverly Roberts, want to get this right.
officials have made their decision with the clock. A Courtney Ward three-pointer at the 9.58 mark was Florida State's last field goal. It put them up 51-41. Their last eight points have come from the free throw line. Two point nine seconds is the decision. And James is going to put up the free throw to try to take a two point edge. Florida State will have two point nine seconds. And that will do it. Georgia advances to the Sweet 16 for a 19th time in program history. The Lady Bulldogs improved to 8-0 against Florida State. Our Capital One player of the game, no doubt, Jasmine James, the sophomore, came up big in the clutch. Her defense created offense for Georgia. It created confidence. And from there, the Lady Bulldogs, a total team effort to advance to the Sweet 16. Andy Landers does it again. 28 NCAA tournament appearances, 19 Sweet 16 for the Hall of Fame coach. Balanced scoring. Anne Marie Armstrong leads the squad with 15 off the bench. James with 14 points. Paulita Miller with 11. Meredith Mitchell with 10. 10 rebounds for Portia Phillips and the upperclassmen, arm in arm, walking off together as they get ready to head to Dallas. What an incredible finish at Auburn Arena. Portia Phillips, baseline, no, in and out. Jasmine James streaks in the putback and one. Taking another look. Then the officials decided there was 2.9 seconds left on the clock. James made the free throw. And on the last play, Florida State was trying to get it to their senior sharpshooter, Courtney Ward. And the pass went wide. All four games in the Dallas region being played in this same time in this Tuesday night's time slot. Three teams have advanced. The five seed Green Bay beats Michigan State. They'll face the winner of the Baylor West Virginia game. Meantime, Georgia heading to Dallas to take on two seed Texas A&M in a game that the fans can watch Sunday afternoon, 4.30 Eastern time on ESPN2. What a thrilling finish to this one at Auburn Arena. Georgia led by seven in the first half. Florida State led by as much as 10 in the second half. But at the end, the Lady Bulldogs.